All right, what is up you guys? My name is Giovanni and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I go about doing my fuel systems on my LS swaps. I'm just gonna cover some basic info for you guys. This is just stuff that I run. It's mostly the most cost effective way to get your LS engine fueled and running. All right, so I have a couple things to show you guys today. I went ahead and brought out a Vortec truck intake. This is actually the intake off of my 55 Chevy pickup. I just wanted to just kind of show you guys how I run my fuel system on this truck in particular and most of my other vehicles actually. So this is just a 4.85360 truck Vortec intake. You'll find this across pretty much all trucks, whether it's an SUV, truck, Suburban, Tahoe, Escalade, basically any truck that has a 4.853 or 60 is gonna have this style of intake on it. This one in particular is a returnless intake, meaning that there is only a fuel inlet on the fuel rail, not a return. So on some other ones, on the fuel rails, on the intakes, they will actually have a return line to go back and it'll have a built-in fuel pressure regulator. This one will need an external fuel pressure regulator. So now that we've kind of talked about our intake setup, I wanna show you guys how I basically convert this intake to accept AN fittings. If you guys don't know, AN is just a style of connection basically for fluid hoses and I guess other hoses. It stands for Army Navy. And if you wanna learn more about them, you can research them. I also have a video talking about AN hoses and how to make them. But basically this is a simple aluminum dash six AN fitting. This is a pretty common size of fitting. It's a decent size hose. Comes out to like, I think three ace hose. This is plenty of hose for a stock uh, or mildly boosted application. Uh, you're not gonna run into really any li limiting factor on running this hose. But basically, I wanna just show you guys kind of how I get my fuel systems done. So I'm just gonna kind of temporarily shove this guy in here to show you guys how I do it. So this is my fuel inlet. So what this is, this is a three ace pipe to six and fitting. You can get these fittings. I'll go ahead and put the part number here or and there'll be a link in the description for all these parts. Um, but basically what this does is this converts this three ace pipe to a six AN fitting. This is a very typical LS kind of fitting. I know Russell makes one and there's also, I get mine from a company called ICT Billet. They're really cheap, they're on eBay and their shipping is just phenomenal. I get my stuff usually in like one to two days, it's crazy. So the first step really is converting your inlet and return if you have one to AN6. Then once you have that, you're gonna go ahead and make your fuel hoses. I make mine again out of dash six line. This line in particular, I'll go ahead and put in the description as well. This is nylon braided hose. It's not stainless steel braided, but the hose itself is stainless steel core. I don't know if that makes much sense or if you guys can see that but it's basically rubber hose embedded with stainless steel and then wrapped in a nylon mesh. Not the highest quality of hose, but so far I haven't had any issues. It's really easy to work with. You know, if you wanted to splurge, I just think it's really unnecessary, but you can go ahead and get something like this. This is completely stainless braided. However, I don't think it's completely necessary. I don't know if some racing standards require it or not. I'm sure most would be fine with this. Yeah, this is really good stuff. It's really affordable. It comes out to like, I wanna say $2 a foot or something like that. It's really not that expensive. I usually get 20 foot rolls for about $30. So this is what I use for pretty much all of my applications. It's definitely a step up from just plain old rubber hose. Uh, however, this is not rated for E85. So if you guys are gonna run E85, you're gonna wanna grab some PTFE hose. PTFE hose is basically exactly this, but it has a plastic tube on the inside that helps protect from the corrosive characteristics of E85. So now that we've talked about hose, we've talked about our pipe fitting on our intake. Basically what we're, we do is we go ahead and make our AN line. I have a video showing you guys how to make these AN lines. Really easy, it's not complicated. You don't need any tools. However, if you are gonna make the, a bunch of these, I would recommend getting a cheap AN aluminum wrench because the way I do it, 90% of the time you end up marring the surfaces of them. I really don't care, uh, but you know, if you're particular about that kind of stuff, you'll wanna get an aluminum wrench to tighten these down. Once you have your fitting on there, you're able to screw your hose onto that. Then, 
about halfway down the frame of my build is where I usually go ahead and attach my fuel pressure regulator if this is a returnless system and my fuel pump or if it's a uh, return system this is where I go ahead and just run my fuel pump. So what I have in this box this is uh, basically my fuel pump kit that I always buy. It is a very very cheap Chinese Wabro knockoff. So far I haven't had any issues with these however I haven't had any real long durability tests with them but what this is this is a Wabro 392 knockoff so basically the Wabro 392 is an inline fuel pump that flows just right around 255 liters per hour and as you can see this one is brand new um, so I'm just going to pull it out of the wrapper. This one in particular is from JDM Speed Motors. They're all over eBay. They're right around $45 for the kit. Honestly, it doesn't matter which one you buy. They're all the same. I bought about four different versions of this and they all just basically print <laughs> their own name on them. It really doesn't matter because you get this cover with it and you cover it with that. So, you know, if you don't want your fuel pump saying JDM Speed Motor, High quality, genuine auto spare parts. <laughs> if you don't want that, don't worry about it. You basically get a rubber sheath for it and you know, you never even know that it wasn't a genuine wall burrow. The other cool thing is that these kits come with the fittings to go straight to an AN6 already. So now that I'm remembering, I forgot to buy a uh, fuel filter to show you guys, but those I just get a very generic like $20 eBay fuel filter um, that goes to an AN6. So yeah, the reason I like these pumps is that they convert straight to AN6 fittings, so it's really nice. You don't have to worry about finding the right adapters for them. Um, I'm not sure, I've never actually bought a genuine Walboro pump, so I'm not sure if the Walboro does as well. So basically what I'm saying is if you guys don't wanna spend, you know, the $40 on the cheap Chinese one and you wanna get some durability, uh, the Walboro is about 90 some dollars. You know, I can't compare the two, obviously, because I don't have Walboro with me right now. But I'm going to go ahead and say that they're very similar. Let's just say that. They're very similar. Uh, again, I haven't done any durability testing on these. But so far, they run, they do run very loud. So that might be a turnoff for you guys. But carry on with the story. Halfway to the gas tank, I like to go ahead and put my fuel pump. I usually try to keep my fuel pump pretty close to the tank. I'd rather be closer to the tank than closer to the intake uh, because just remember guys that these things don't suck necessarily, they pump. So hopefully gravity will kind of get the fuel to it from your tank because hopefully it's mounted a little bit lower than your tank. You know, just remember that these aren't great at sucking, they're great at blowing. Uh, I don't know another way to put that. Also, they're not indicated on inlet and outlet. I just know that uh, the studs for your positive and negative face towards the intake. Yeah, I try to keep these really close to the gas tank and then that usually is enough to basically siphon the gas from the tank and then pump it out at that 60 PSI, well, at that 255 liters per hour. Since we're talking about our returnless system, the returnless system will require an external fuel pressure regulator. So that means that we have a couple options. We can run like an AEM setup or, you know, a uh, aeromotive fuel pressure regulator up close to the intake. But what I like to run, well, and it's a really proven part, is running a Corvette fuel filter regulator. I don't have one to show you guys. I have one mounted on my vehicle right now. So I'll go ahead and drop a part number down below. I usually get them off of eBay where they've already been converted to AN6 with uh, fittings very similar to this. But basically, uh, the Corvette fuel filter regulator would be ran on a like 99 to 2005 Corvette. And what that does is it, it takes the fuel coming straight from the fuel filter, puts it right down to that 60 PSI that we need, and then it has a return on it so you can pump the extra fuel back into the gas tank. And it's nice because you only need to run a return line about this long in order to get back to the, the gas tank. Whereas on the return style system, your return is on the intake itself. So you basically have to run, let's say 20, well, let's say 15 feet for the inlet, and then you have to run another 15 feet for the return back to the tank. 
So the returnless system is actually really cool because you don't have to spend as much money on hoses and fittings. You really just have to buy, like it's a $90 uh, fuel filter regulator. So it's, it's, it's a trade off for sure. But what I would say is no matter what system, what intake you have, just run that one. There's no sense in like trying to find a returnless intake or trying to find a return style intake. Uh, honestly, they both work really well. Obviously, you have to be a little bit more careful with the returnless intake because you have to make sure that you set up the return system. Otherwise, you'll have just way too much fuel going to your engine and no way to get it back to the tank and you'll end up running rich and flooding your engine. Just run what you guys brung basically uh, when it comes to intakes. Remember, you'll be able to tell just by the number of inlets and returns on your intake. The returnless style are a little bit more coveted just because it gives you the flexibility to not run the stock fuel pressure regulator. If that's an issue for you, you know, if you're running high boost or whatever, you have to make sure you maintain your fuel pressure regulation. Obviously, the returnless style will be a little bit better for you. Most of the time, what I do is I run the stock fuel tanks on the vehicles. I don't add any fuel pump in tank or anything like that. Usually, um, adding this stuff to the fuel center is enough to get the gas up to the engine. Once these things get fuel, they pump it. Um, it's just getting the fuel to them. So if you mount it really far away or you mount it like up above your gas tank, you might run into issues with that. So just be careful on your placement. So what I usually do is I usually just pop a hole in the gas tank somewhere where I can get my hands to, usually somewhere close to like the fuel sending unit, just so I can reach my hand in and actually access it. And I use these kind of uh, bulkhead fittings they're A and 6 bulkhead fittings and that allows me to just pop the return line onto that and it's usually sufficient. Uh, I try to keep it above the fuel level but honestly if you had to you can probably put it right to the fuel level because that return does come at a little bit of uh, pressure so it should be fine. I hope that clears up a little bit of the air for you guys. I know this is a little bit of a rambly video however I'm trying to make these videos to appeal to beginners. Some of you guys already know a lot of this information especially if you watch my channel quite frequently. If you know someone that has some questions, go ahead and refer them to this video. My word is not gospel. Obviously, I'm running the bare minimum requirements for an LS system. Fuel pumps are not generally something you want to skimp on. Uh, however, I have had good luck with these. So if you're scared of your fuel pump dying or if you're running boost or whatever, you want to make sure you do have a reliable fuel pump because you don't want your motor running lean. So obviously take what I have to say, spend the extra money on the better parts or run what I have and just err on the side of caution. But I hope this helps you guys. If it did, or if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop me a like, hit that subscribe button for more of these videos. I'm going to be going over everything within my how to LS swap an engine basics video, which can be found in the description below. There's a link. You can watch that video if you haven't seen it. Share this with someone that's LS swapping an engine. Follow me on Instagram if you have any questions and uh, have a great day guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.